Hi friends. So in my craft room, I have this drawer filled with crap, basically. It's just a bunch of stuff that I can't really bring myself to throw away in the off chance that I could use it for a craft. There's a bunch of junk like a pineapple, there's some playing cards, an old puzzle, whatever this thing is. Here, I'm gonna use these. These CDs that I'm using have no use. They're retired. Their careers are over. This will give them something to do. These CDs are already pretty scratched up. Great. More super reflective things to film. Ooh, that's pretty. Wait. Why does this CD have a Surgeon General's warning? The CD is intended for smokers? Why do I have this? To try and get the label off of these, I scratched up the top with scissors and used packing tape to pull it off. That worked really slick, but then it didn't. I tried scratching the label up more and everything, but this smoker CD just wasn't having it. So instead I just sanded it really good. I didn't get any more of the label off, but it did smooth it out so you couldn't feel any of the lettering. Gross. I hope that's not dangerous. Since I sanded these, they should grip paint really well, but I still gave them two coats of gesso as a base coat. Now what should I paint? Rainbows. No. A donut. Come on. I've got it. Way to think outside the box. Now, I know a llama is not a very original concept for me, but they're so cute. What I should have done was draw Filbert. What I did draw was this guy with a mop of hair that looks like a weird purple hat. After a second coat, he's looking much more crisp. For the background, I went with a dark blue in a cheap dollar store paint that's gonna take about four coats. Now let's add some details and see if we can fix this hair situation. Mmm, not really, but at least he looks a lot more soft and fuzzy. I started to shade this white with dark gray, hated it, then started to use white to color over it, which just sort of diluted the gray, and then I decided I liked it. Great story. I tried to draw this llama so that the hole in the CD was the nose, but the more I look at him, the weirder it looks. Maybe I just need to take a step back. Finally, I added black lining. I wanted to varnish this with a matte varnish, but I was afraid of the paint getting all weird like it has in the past. So instead I used my normal gloss varnish, let it dry for about a day, and then used a matte varnish. It worked! The paint didn't come out all weird, and he looks really cute. His weird nose hole even grew on me. What next? Mmm, that looks like frosting. It's not frosting. That's a donut. It's not a donut. It's a... Wait, what is it? It's a waffle. I spent a lot of time agonizing over what is the perfect Posca shade for a waffle. It's apricot, in case you're wondering. This yummy looking swirl up here is chocolate syrup. I don't know if people actually put chocolate syrup on waffles, but I would. I love chocolate. Honestly, thank god I used Posca markers for this, because I made so many mistakes and had to go over it so many times trying to make all of these little waffle squares look even. You can't even see what you're doing, ding dong. After about four coats, the syrupy area still looked terrible. So I gave up and I just used an actual brown paint that I already had. It doesn't match perfectly, but it covered so much more evenly than the Posca. Last, I added a few details. Lining that you can barely see, and some juicy highlights. For the varnish, I tried a dual effect. I used gloss first, and then matte again, but I only put the matte on the waffle part and left the syrup glossy. I wish the glossy was even more glossy and smooth, but overall it's pretty cute. I really like the way it came out but let's not discuss why there's butter on top of the chocolate syrup. Next, I decided to do a landscape. 
You know how you always see those landscapes that are just strips of color and they look really easy to do, but they come out looking really nice? Yeah, I wanna do one of those. I decided to go with actual paint for this one, partly because I hoped it would take less coats and partly because I don't have all the colors that I wanted. I mostly use cheap paints for this, and boy can you tell, cause whew, that's patchy. Let's add a second coat, and a third. I added a few blue mountains using dollar store paint. It needed about three coats, but I didn't mind cause these colors are so pretty. Let's put some hills in the foreground. How very Bob Ross of you. And then I finished it off with some trees and a shadow on the hill that was originally gonna be more trees, but the green trees gave me trouble, so I abandoned the blue ones. I varnished this one with just glossy varnish. And of course, because it's me, something weird happened with the paint. I don't know why it looks weird and cloudy like this, but whatever, I'll just stand really far away from it. All right, let's speed it up. We've still got two more to do. While I was working on these, I was watching Shark Week and that inspired me to do a wave. The landscape that I worked on inspired me to do it in a color block sort of design. I chose five different colors of blue for the wave. The lightest two are that pastel Cali art brand that I used on the mirror I painted. I really like the colors and the coverage isn't bad, but the paint is thick. It's lumpy already on the first coat. The other three colors I used were dollar store paint, so they required a lot of coats. And apparently somewhere in there, I decided to ditch that pastel turquoise. I wasn't sure what to do for the background. I didn't want yet another shade of blue for the sky, so I chose yellow to contrast with it. Don't yellow skies mean storms or something? Last, I added some lines that I spent a lot of time fixing off camera. I coated this in a butt ton of gloss varnish, trying to balance out that chunky, chunky paint. It's still extra textured, and I don't know where these two random spots came from, but I still like it. Last one, so let's go for something simple. Drippy stripes. How many stripes are there? I mean, come on. Don't do it. <sighs> okay, fine. I'll use these little pots I got in some craft kit. I don't even remember where they came from. Wow. I'm glad I didn't use these for whatever project they came in. So let's add some coats. Seven coats. And I used up all of the paint. This is ugly. Time to pivot. Let's add more paint, but this time with paint pens. I like these colors much better because when the paint in the pots dried, it darkened up a lot. And these are so much brighter. Plus, since there's a literal crust of paint on the CD, the paint pens didn't have any problem with coverage. I added some shadows and highlights. Why do these look so weird? Oh, they're too skinny. Oh, crap. I guess maybe that happens when you're coloring over nine other layers of paint. I'll just add more paint and fix it. I coated this with a lot, and I mean a lot, of gloss varnish. And while it sort of looks like a topography map up close, I actually really like how this turned out, especially considering the disaster it was headed for. So that's all of them. I really liked this project. It was pretty fun and I didn't have to buy any new materials. What do you think? Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.